Hello everyone, this is Klaus Aranha at the University of Tsukuba and this is Experiment Designs in Computer Science, Week 3, Statistical Inference. This is going to be a very important video, so pay attention. In this first video, I will introduce the general concept of statistical inference. So let's go. Last week, I introduced what is called descriptive statistics. They can be used to describe a system that we are studying. For example, uh, the confidence interval of the mean can tell me what is the expected height of students in a university, or the expected time for running a computer program. It can also tell me how certain I am of this description. Is it a sure value, or do I need more data? However, what I cannot do with the confidence interval and other descriptive statistics, well, at least not directly, is to make more categorical affirmations. For example, I cannot, or it would be better to say I should not, purely use confidence interval to say program A is faster than program B. That's not what the confidence interval was made for. So, when I want to say if program A is faster than program B, what can I do? One very important tool to do this kind of analysis is the statistical inference. Let's start with an example. Imagine that I'm a very lucky person because I own a factory that produces delicious chocolate. My factory produces packages of cocoa and each package should contain 300 grams. Of course, the factory is not perfect. Sometimes a package will have a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. But as long as the average is 300 grams and the variance is not too big, I'm happy. So every six months, I want to check if my production is working right. And if it's not working right, I need to execute a maintenance to fix any problems with the factory. How would you do this check? How would you do this check every six months? How would you concretely decide if the factory needs maintenance or not? Think for a little bit before continuing. So, from what we learned in the last week, what we could do is think, oh, maybe I can do an experiment to test if the factory has a problem or not. That's great. So every six months, we want to do an experiment to check if the average package produced by the factory weights 300 grams or not. To do this experiment, first we obtain a plain, a sample of chocolate from the factory. The sample could have 30 observations, 30 packages. Let's not worry about this number too much right now, but we want a large number to reduce the error of our estimate. There are other things that we need to take care of. For example, it would be better if these 30 observations came from different machines in the factory, produced on different days, so we can have a general idea of the production of the factory. On the other hand, if we suspect that there is some factor that influences the result, like one specific machine is broken, or we think that there is a problem that only happens on Mondays, we may want to take that into account when we collect observations. But we are going to talk more about this in a future class. Today, I want to focus on the general case. So, we calculate the mean estimate from the sample, and since we remember last lecture, we can also calculate the confidence interval. Let's say that the calculation resulted in the estimated weight being 295 grams, and the 95% confidence interval was between 283 grams and 307 grams. Good. Now what? From these values, do I need maintenance of my factory or not? That's the question, and I cannot answer that question just with my confidence interval. 
So, statistic inference. Statistical inference is a technique to establish the probable truth of a statement. In the chocolate factory case, it could be the factory needs maintenance or the factory does not need maintenance. Or more specifically, the factory true mean is probably under 300 grams right now. Okay, so to do statistical inference, we follow many of the same steps that we did with the descriptive statistics. In fact, a lot of the calculation that we are going to see today is very similar to the calculation of the confidence interval. But first, we create a probabilistic model that describes our system, and we calculate statistics using data from samples and observations that we obtained the experiment. The difference here is that we use the data and the statistics to compare the calculated model, the sample model, with a theoretical model, the population model. One way to think about statistical inference is to compare it with logical inference. In logical inference, A implies B, we establish the truth value of statement A, and it tells us the, the truth value of statement B. In statistical inference, this data implies this conclusion, we calculate estimators from the data to calculate the probability that the conclusion is true. A key idea for statistical inference is the statistical hypothesis. You probably heard this word hypothesis before. A hypothesis is a sentence that explains or describes something about the world. A statistical hypothesis is something a bit more specific. It also describes the world or the model that we are studying, but it describes it from a specific statistical point of view. So in our example, our statistical hypothesis would be the true mean weight of packages produced in our factory is at least 300 grams. By the way, note how important it is that we started from a general situation, then we consider the question of interest, and finally we create the statistical hypothesis. So we have a chocolate factory, we want to know when we should do maintenance of the factory, we decide that we should do maintenance if the production is less than expected. And now our hypothesis and our expectation is that the true mean is above this value that we defined it's the expected value. If you start from the hypothesis, I think it's a bad habit because it may force you to invent numbers that are not related with what you really want to know. And in the end, you're doing an experiment because you really want to know something. You must always focus on your research interest, not on the specific hypothesis or specific methods. Okay? I think it's important that we expend a little bit more time talking about how we use the word hypothesis. Hypothesis is a word that people use a lot because it feels serious and it feels science, but it's a word with a very specific meaning and it's important that we use it correctly. So I want to separate a common hypothesis, which is a statement about the world in general versus a statistical hypothesis, which is a statement about a statistical model of the world. Usually, we are talking about specific parameters of that model. So let's see some examples. For example, I can say that my common hypothesis is that the factory is broken and produces less cocoa than normal. A statistical hypothesis would be more like the mean weight of the packages produced is less than 300 grams. A common hypothesis would be the proposed algorithm is faster than the standard algorithm. If we transform this common hypothesis into a statistical hypothesis, we say the difference in the mean execution time between the proposed algorithm and the standard algorithm is above two seconds. A common hypothesis would be cats are more popular than dogs. A statistical hypothesis would be the proportion of cat videos on YouTube that are watched until the end 
is 5% higher than the proportion of dog videos that are watched until the end. So, as you can see, one easy way to think about it is that statistical hypothesis can be formulated in terms of an equation. So, if you cannot transform your hypothesis into an equation, this means that you probably need to think about it a little bit more. When we do an analysis using statistical inference, one of the first steps is to choose the statistical hypothesis that we are going to test. So we talked a little bit about common hypothesis and statistical hypothesis, but there are more things to keep in mind so that your hypotheses are useful. One of them is predictive power. So the simple way to describe predictive power is how useful this hypothesis can be in the future. If the hypothesis only describes the past, it's not very useful. Note that studying the past can be useful for other reasons, can be important. But right now, we're focusing on statistical inference. And for statistical inferences, we usually want a hypothesis that can predict something about the future. So let's see these examples. First, there were mistakes in the production because the workers were tired yesterday. Okay, but how do we transform this into an inference? Okay. Uh, a more a one a hypothesis that makes that that uh, predicts something would be there were mistakes in the production because workers are tired on Mondays and now we can check how much tired the workers are on Mondays next Monday or maybe the other Monday and we can test that okay another is the principle of parsimony parsimony means that we usually want a hypothesis that is as simple to describe as possible. The general idea is that a parsimonial hypothesis are easy to understand, to investigate, and to analyze. Even if we confirm a complex hypothesis, sometimes we don't learn much from that. So, for example, we can say that the energy usage pattern is described by a neural network with a million parameters. Okay, and maybe that has predictive power, but it's very hard to understand which of these million parameters is important for our hypothesis. On the other hand, if we can get an energy usage pattern with only a third degree polynomial, we have a very small number of parameters and we can understand if this polynomial is really related to the prediction or not. So if both of these hypotheses, if they have the same predictive power, we usually want to go with the simpler hypothesis. Finally, we have the external consistency hypothesis. So a statistical hypothesis is an equation, as we talked. Uh, it's not hard to make equations that reach the numbers that we want or numbers that make no sense. It can be actually really easy. So we always need to check that our analysis actually makes sense. We compare it against the real world. Sometimes the difference changes what we know about the real world, but sometimes when we look at the equations and we look at the real world, uh, we realize that our, our hypothesis or conclusions may be wrong. Uh, to give a very obvious example, look at this. The mean global temperature is correlated with the number of pirates in the sea. And you may think that this is silly, but if you get like a number of pirates and you get the temperature and they have a very high correlation, there is a website that tracks these sort of silly correlations. Of course, uh, global warming and pirates don't have anything to do with each other. So we know that this hypothesis is not good because we know something about pirates and we know something about global warming. So it's important to think about external consistency. Uh, we can think that a better hypothesis would be that the global temperature might be correlated with CO2 emissions. Or we can even say, oh, it's, or it's related using this formula. Uh, we know that there is a mechanism of CO2 that traps energy. So we can think that this mechanism is somehow related with the temperature of the world. So it's a hypothesis that, has, that is based on knowledge that we already have. Okay, so now that we have a nice hypothesis, what can we do with it? Okay, 
The general idea of the statistical inferences is that we use hypotheses and an experiment is to create multiple hypotheses to describe a system that we are studying and then do an experiment that from the date of the experiment we can decide which of the hypotheses that we made fits data the best. So let's think about the factory example. We could make two hypotheses. Hypothesis one, the factory does not need maintenance because the mean weight of the package is above 300 grams. Hypothesis two, the factory needs maintenance because the mean weight of the packages is below 300. Now we can collect information. Okay, note how this hypothesis also follow our research interest. We want to know if the factory needs maintenance. So we create hypotheses that are related to that idea. So after we have the two hypotheses, we can do an experiment to collect the data that we analyze. So in this case, we collect 10 cocoa packages and we measure the weight. So the process of statistical inference is that given the data that we observe in the experiment, we observe the probability that this data would happen if hypothesis one was false, and we observe the probability that the data would happen if hypothesis two was false. So that the calculation that we want to make is if the experiment data is X, we could cal calculate the probability of X given H1, the probability of X given H2, the probability of X given H3, etc., etc., etc. So if we take the two hypotheses from the last slide, our statistical inference calculation would focus on try to answer the following question. Given that we observe this data, the weight is 293, 325, 271, 313, etc. For this data, what is the probability that this data would happen if hypothesis 1 was true? And what is the probability that this data would happen if hypothesis 2 was true? There are many ways to define hypotheses and calculate inference from them. In this course, I want to focus on one that is used very often, which is the new hypothesis significance test. The key idea that we're talking about is statistical hypothesis here. So hypothesis here mean a statistical description of the model that represents how the world works. So our two hypotheses are the new hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. We usually call them H0 and H1. So the new hypothesis represents the world as we expect it to be, while the alternate hypothesis represents some surprising or unexpected effect. In this formulation, the goal of our analysis is to calculate if the probability of the alternate hypothesis is high enough that we should conclude the new hypothesis is no longer good enough to represent the world. So, in this methodology, it's very important to define a reasonable new hypothesis. The new hypothesis is usually formulated to describe the world as we expect it to be. We can usually formulate the new hypothesis model from existing knowledge, or maybe values from the theory, or maybe models, or the requirements of a system, such as in the factory example. On the other hand, the alternate hypothesis is a model that describes something different, something new that is happening in the world, something that requires an action, or something that changes how we understand the world. So, for example, we expect our chocolate factory to be working. That's the standard situation, right? But someone on Twitter complained that our packages are smaller than advertised. So we conduct an experiment to see if there is a problem in the factory. The choice of the new hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis is not always simple, but it's also not something that you should worry too much. In many cases, the choice will end up revealing itself, so don't worry. Okay, so this ends the first video where I explained the general idea of statistical inferences and hypothesis testing. In the next video, I will talk about how we actually calculate those probabilities and how do we make the inference decision. So see you there.